Welcome back. So the weather is getting warmer and Audie is in a window catching a breeze. So maybe he'll be back. Maybe he won't. I don't know. He was with me earlier and his little tail was making an appearance in the last video I did. So today I got a surprise when I went out to check my mail. I'll show you what it was when I come back. Um, and I do get things from time to time, gifts from viewers. It's always a delightful surprise. Um, I can't keep everything I get. Usually I say, okay, fine, I'll keep something because you know I want to. But much of the rest of the things go into my Etsy shop for the benefit of the schoolhouse project. But I got a gift this morning that absolutely I am keeping. And I'll show you when we come. All right, so here's the note. Hi, Sue, open as an unboxing. Well, that didn't happen, and I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, you no longer have to wait another two years to have the Chinese dumpling dish. Well, the minute I read that, you know I wasn't going to wait to open it. Uh, I have had the exact same one for decades, and I now want you to have it. Uh, I know how much you love it, and now it's yours. Enjoy and much love. This is from our very frequent commenter, Flowing Brook. Now, I'm going to show you the little video clip I made of the piece she was referring to. I showed that last time. So here you go. So I wanted to show you a piece that I have been watching for about two years. So, I, oh, I keep hoping that eventually it's going to occur to them it's not selling and they'll drop the price. But still, take a look at this. We are in the Asian booth in the corner. And I thought I would show you this. $75. This is a Chinese serving plate. As you can see, it's raised and they would have put, um, uh, special goodies in here, you know, special dumplings. And this is priced at $75. And it's been priced at $75 for a very, very long time. I've been watching this for at least two years. And I figure one of these days, they're going to decide they want to sell it and bring the price down to a more reasonable level. And I'm just hoping I'm here the day that happens. Now this sort of little serving dish, footed serving dish, would not have been used for ordinary food like, you know, rice or, you know, slop whatever on there. Let's throw in lo mein on this. No, it would have been for little delicacies because the dish is a little more decorative and a little more important than ordinary stoneware that would have been used in your average Chinese household. So it's a very nice dish. At $75, it's too much. Um, I am quite certain that if I decided I needed, just desperately needed to get a dish like that, that I could find one in a similar design, comparable condition, for closer to the $50 range, perhaps even less. And so even though I like it, even though it's a really nice piece of Chinese stoneware, it's not coming home with me, not at $75. Okay, so I knew what it was. She told me right away what it was. And I did in fact make an honest effort to wait so that I could open this as an unboxing. But that lasted about four minutes 
because then I just had to open it. This is, here, here we go. This is right side up. This is just a beautiful piece. Thank you so much, Barbara. And I don't have to worry about whether or not that's staying with me. Oh yeah, that's staying with me. I do love the piece. And I, she's right. I, I love it. I, I have been watching that piece in that antique booth for two years. And I thought eventually they'll bring it down to a more reasonable price. But this is a wonderful piece. When I opened it, Audie, I think he recognizes the smell of Chinese stoneware because that's he drinks out of Chinese stoneware. Came right up, had to sniff it out. And I had to explain to him it was not going to be his food dish. Um, he took it well, what can I say? But thank you. That was a, just a wonderful gift. I will love it, and I will take very good care of it. And no, Audie's not eating cat food out of it. Well, he's not eating anything else out of it either. It's not like I'm going to prepare little Chinese dumplings and let him have that. No, he's got his own dish. Anyway, I wanted you to see that. It was just such a thoughtful, thoughtful thing to do. All right. So let's get started on finishing up that last Bedford trip. Now, this booth that we're going to, we've been to this booth before, so it should be a little familiar. And there is one small bookcase in that booth. That's what I shop from, because the rest of the booth has things that are, are they're, they're nice, but they're just not of interest to me personally. So let's take a look. So let's just take a quick look around. We've talked about this little booth before. In particular, the contents of this bookshelf. Now, I don't know how they set their prices. I really don't. I come in here and I find that they have a few prices and they put the same price on everything. This is an unmarked picture. Very nice. Seven dollars. It's called a poppy pitcher. This one. Seven dollars pitcher. So certainly they are not going by size. Um, maybe everything with a poppy on it is seven dollars. I don't understand the pricing structure, but it usually works for me. Um, Six dollars. Japanese Lusterware Salt and Pepper Shakers. I'm definitely going for these because I like the ones with silver instead of gold on the top. Quite rare, and that was something that they did in the Art Deco period, so it helps me date them. The larger unmarked picture, yeah, that's coming with me. That is a really nice picture with pretty poppies on it, and at $7.00. It's a good deal. Geisha wear salt and pepper set. Let me see which one has the price. You, you have the price. Six dollars. And there are a lot of geisha wear collectors out there. Um, however, let's take a look. We've got ten dollars for this set of geisha wear salt and pepper shakers. As I say, I do not understand how they price their things, but works for me. All right, I'm going to take a look through these Lusterware bowls. If I find anything that's interesting that I'm going to take with me, we'll just turn the camera back on again. They usually have some very nice Lusterware pieces. Very often they're Austrian or Czech, but occasionally some Japan pieces. Um, what I picked up from them uh, on this trip was that unmarked picture, which I do believe is Czech or Austrian. It's got that look to it. And then two pair of Japanese salt and pepper shakers. You notice the salt and pepper shakers were both priced at $6. And there was another poppy pitcher, like the pitcher I got, priced at $7. That This dealer has a very odd pricing structure. I do not understand what it is. 
I very often benefit from it, so I'm not complaining about it. But it just goes to show you that things can be wildly unpredictable. For all I know, this is like grandma's China and, you know, the dealer just starts writing numbers and keeps writing them. I don't know. Perhaps this reflects whatever the dealer paid for them. Um, certainly, I have not noticed a relationship between the relative value of the item and the relative price that the dealer is charging. But hey, that's not always a bad thing. All right, next up, I went to Janine's booth, and I usually start there, but this last trip I didn't because I found myself coming to the end of my shopping trip without having gone through the entire uh, first floor at Bedford. So I decided to start with the first floor this time. And Janine's is the booth I hit on my way up the stairs. So let's take a look at what I found there. Well, usually I start my shopping adventures off in Janine's booth because I know I'm never going to walk away empty handed. But I didn't do that this time. Um, so I'm coming to Janine's booth a little late. Now let's start off with this. This is a very pretty, antique-looking picture, but it's not. This is one of those pieces that florists deliver your flowers in. You just buy it from the online florist and your flowers show up in this. The price on this is $3.00. And I am taking it. It's vintage, not antique, but the fact is, it's a pretty piece. And because I'm getting it for $3, I can absolutely afford to put it out there at a very good price. And someone might enjoy having this, either as a vase or just a pitcher, as it looks, to water their flowers. So, next up, this is a Japan piece. This is a kitchen piece, and it's designed to hold spoons or other utensils. Plus, we've got a little pocket there. This is also $3, and of course, it's got the Made in Japan sticker. This one is $6. This is another Japan piece. And just as soon as I had finished saying that the Japanese did not work much in bisque, I found a bisque piece that is, in fact, Japan. Six dollars, and it's not just ordinary Japan, it's occupied Japan. And it's actually a very pretty piece. This is a wall plat. You would just pop that on the wall. So, now that picture is not old. It's, it's not even the sort of thing that I would ordinarily think to grab, mostly because although it's vintage, it's not even really old vintage, but it has a nice antique look to it. And it was very inexpensive. And there may be people out there who would like a nice antique looking piece not have to spend a lot of money on it. And at $3, I can take that chance. Um, but again, it's not the sort of thing I would usually pick up. And the great thing about that piece is it looks a lot more valuable than it really is. So I got it at a very good price. Somebody else is gonna be able to get it from me at a very good price and they're going to get a piece that looks like they paid a lot more for it. So I thought that was pretty good. The Japanese spoon holder, I realized that not very many people collect little decorative spoons anymore. Um, I have a few spoons in a drawer, olive spoons mostly, um, that, uh, I'm not sure what possessed me, how I came by those things, but I don't really use, like, collected decorative spoons, hang them on the wall. A lot of people do. I'm not really sure this spoon holder is going to be 
at its most useful for that purpose. When I saw it, I thought, you know, you pop something like that on the wall next to the back door in your kitchen, and you can hang keys from it. And then it had that wonderful little cup, and that wonderful little cup can hold a garage door opener or, you know, maybe an extra key, something like that. Um, I was thinking initially change, but I tend... All right, Audie's back. I don't know if you noticed. He just slammed the camera. He's looking for love. Um, I usually have a large change bowl. It's not like it used to be when a nickel or a dime would be enough to get you past the parking meters. But there are little things you could put into that little pocket. But I really saw it very much as a key holder or a mask holder. Um, I know my physical therapist tells me that in her family, the cabinet knobs are where everybody sticks their masks in the kitchen. And that led me to believe that, yeah, you know, people might need a little mask holder. So we'll see. Anyway, somebody's going to buy it. They're going to do what they want with it. But that was um, $3 as well. Inexpensive piece, very useful. Um, and the bisque plaque, well, I had this, I picked up a total of three bisque finish Japan pieces this time out. Very unusual because I don't often see them. I did happen to see a lot of them on this trip. You know, when it rains, it pours. And uh, as I mentioned when filming, I've just gotten through saying I hardly ever see uh, Japan bisque. And although I did not mention it in the video, I think that plaque was occupied Japan. So we'll see. Nice piece, $6, good price. All right, then we went upstairs. Well, this is a little shelf sitter. It's a boy and girl, um, a nice bisque finish, $3, made in Japan. And although I don't do very much with shelf sitter figures, I have to say, whenever I've listed them in my Etsy shop, they've sold immediately. So this is going to come home with me. And one of the things I like about this is notice the little hole in the boy's hand. He can hold something. I have no idea what he originally held, but I think I'm going to find something very cute to stick in there. So that booth is situated in between a great many of Paul's booths. There's Paul's all around that area. And then there is another little sort of not Paul booth in there. And I am finding the most interesting things in that little booth. I really am. I'm going to have to make some inquiries about who the dealer is because it's every time I go there, I'm walking away with something. So that little bisque shelf sitter, um, I don't do much with shelf sitters. I really don't. It's, um, I, I don't know why it is, because when I do have them available in my Etsy shop, they sell quickly. So maybe this is just my lack of foresight. As a resale buyer, maybe I should go out of my way to find more shelf sitters, but that was a particularly nice set. Um, old. Uh, we're probably looking at 1920s, possibly 1930s, definitely pre-World War II. Um, nice piece. So, I wasn't sorry to get that, certainly not for $3. And then I went from there across the aisle and picked up a piece that I've seen before. So, let's take a look at this. Okay, $14 for this piece, and we have a chip right here. Let's see if you can see that. 
right there. Otherwise, it's in good condition. Oh, I'm sorry. It's $12. Ooh, even better. All right. I am going to take this because I, I'm pretty sure I can make that chip more presentable. Either fill it in, clean it up, something. And also, if you notice, all you have to do is turn it to the back. But, um, obviously I would be uncomfortable selling a chipped piece. It's going to need a little bit of work, but it'll probably be a very quick project. And these pieces, and people invariably call them cracker jars, I don't know why, uh, when you find them in good condition with their rattan or willow handles intact, it's usually a pretty rare find. So, coming with... Well, I've been turning up my notes to that biscuit jar for a while because it has a chip and I don't like buying damaged goods. I don't like selling damaged goods, which is why I don't like buying them. But I have been pricing those biscuit jars and they are selling for a lot more. So at $12, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up that chipped area. Let's take a real close look at it, see if it if I should just let it go as it is, or if it's something I want to do a small repair on. If I want to do the repair, we'll make a video of it. But given the fact that pieces like this are usually starting off at $30 or more, for $12, it's worth my while to grab it, even with a chip, which can always be turned to the back, you know, what can I say, or repaired. Um, it's a good be it, it's a good bargain. It's, um, and of course, whenever you sell something that's damaged, make a point of letting your customers know. Take a photograph, tell them the damaged spot is there, you know. You don't want someone to think they are buying a piece in perfect condition when, in fact, they're buying something damaged. But that is a small chip right on the edge. It's probably going to be a very easy repair job. So we'll see. In any case, $12 for a biscuit jar, and that is one of the larger sizes, um, like, what is probably a good six inches. That is something that I think was a good deal. Now, mind you, if I had gotten it without the chip for $12, I would have thought that was a much better deal. But what can I say? Doesn't always work out that way. All right, next up, this is a little booth on the second floor that's right next to the pig booth. And the pig booth is a booth with pigs. That's, it's not a reflection of anything about the dealer or the way they keep their booth. The booth is neat and tidy all the time. Everything in there is clean, but there are just a great many pigs in there. And I always find it delightful. The pigs always put a smile on my face. It's a booth right next to theirs. Real mixed bag. A lot of jewelry, a lot of things I think are very overpriced, although the jewelry isn't. And this time I hit a sale. So let's take a look. Well, it looks like this little booth is having a sale. So this is a dollar. This is a very pretty little hand-painted Japanese face. It's not marked, but I know what it is. This which is $3, and this is a little stamp. You would just pop that into an ink pad and stamp it. This is jade. We're not talking fabulously high quality jade, of course, but for $3, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure somebody's going to think that's cute and want to take it home. And this. This is 25 cents. It's a little uh, Christmas ornament, I'm going to say. I'm not sure what it is. It's um, 
but it's shaped like a teapot. It's very interesting, very tiny, and that is probably going to go into my little stash of giveaways for my frequent buyers in my Etsy shop, because I know one who collects teapots, and I bet she doesn't have one of these. So the little Japan vase, and even though it's not marked, I know this is a Japan piece. After a while, you can just tell. That little vase for a dollar was a great bargain. It really was, because I, I am accustomed to pieces like that going for at, at least three to five dollars. And there is a market for this out there for smaller vases. People go to work, they want to put a single flower on their desk. They don't want to lug in grandma's big old pitcher. You know, a nice little vase they can bring in in their pocket or the handbag works. So that I think was good. I also really liked the color combination. That yellow was so bright. So I was happy to get that. The, the, um, the stamp, the Chinese stamp. That was probably brought into the U.S. in an Asian import company uh, that would have uh, retailed it at an Asian import store. I can remember back in the 70s, these things were very popular, and it's a stamp. You just press the stamp into an ink pad and press it onto a piece of paper, and it says something. I don't know what but it says something. Nevertheless, the stamp is $3 and it is a jade stamp. It's not the finest quality jade. You know, this is not, you know, fabulous jade, but it's jade nonetheless. So it, we have a stamp made from a semi-precious stone, comes in its own little box, $3. Oh yeah, I think somebody's going to take an interest in that. So I was happy to get that. And then there was that little 25 cent teapot. I had a lot of trouble because it was on a string. I had a lot of trouble holding that steady for the camera. Uh, as I had mentioned in a previous video, when I have frequent buyers at my Etsy shop, I try to keep, um, uh, keep track of what they like, what they collect. Sometimes they'll mention it. This is going into my, you know, blue and white porcelain collection or something. And when they are frequent buyers, I will try to go off and see if I can find little things every now and then. Sometimes I just happen upon them and say, well, you know, the next time they make a purchase, I'm going to wrap this up and tuck it in as a little thank you. Just because I know I can get these things so inexpensively and so easily in my area. And many people just don't see them at all where they're from. So it's just, you know, thank you for your purchase. Uh, and I enjoy doing that. That's a lot of fun. Uh, giving things away is a great deal of fun. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Getting things other people are giving away is also a great deal of fun. So yes, thank you again, Barbara. Um, I, I, I want everyone in the world to be as happy as I am when I get something like that something unexpected, a surprise. So, as I say, when I see them, I grab them. And every now and then, especially once I get to know the buyer, I can start, I can start doing a little bit of shopping in what I know they collect. So, and finally, the last shop I stopped at was also on the second floor and this, too, is a very mixed bag. A lot of things there are very pricey, but I have looked around on lower shelves. I found things, in particular, their Asian porcelain is priced very low. I have a feeling this is a dealer who sees a label saying made in China or made in Japan and is thinking back to what that meant 
in the early 60s, you know, that it was cheap import trash because, boy, I find some great pieces at really good prices. So take a look at what I found this time. Well, I found a wall plate, and this is actually not a small wall plate. This is pretty good size. And this is from the Takahashi importers out of San Francisco. And they imported for the better stores. So their stuff, like Otagiri before them, is first quality. And this is $4.00. So, I'm grabbing it. So, Takahashi was an import company. They specialized in importing pieces from Japan, and then they usually, not always, usually then resold them to high-end department stores. Uh, as was Otagiri before them, they are uh, basically a, a high-end importer. Otagiri had done the same thing. The pieces that you get from this import company are usually top of the line. Uh, the kinds of things that you would see in, uh, in Bloomingdale's or Saks or other really fine department stores. And even though they are not individual handcrafted pieces, they're still really nice, valuable, and just overall good vintage items. So I was glad to get that plate. I really liked the colors and, um, you know, it just seems to me that for $4, how can you go wrong? So, uh, again, as I've mentioned before, I keep a list of Japanese import companies. It's available over on the Sumi's Angels Facebook page. Whenever I update the list, well, not whenever I update the list, but at least once a month, I will send Colleen um, the updated list because uh, it's, it's a work in progress. It always will be. I believe there are a good 30 or 40 names on my list so far, and I know I'm nowhere near done. Um, in fact, there was one company name that was irritating me. It was in the back of my head. I couldn't remember it. And when I was going through the list and I had 20 names on the list, I was thinking, why isn't that one there? Yeah, eventually they will all show up, maybe. But there were so many Japanese import companies. Um, and this is in the post-World War II era. So we're going from... Um, basically from the 1950s up through 2000, because Otagiri was in business through the 80s. Takahashi was in business. Uh, Takahashi may still be in business, to tell you the truth. So we have these import companies. They were bringing in some terrific stuff. I mean, really, really fine pieces. And knowing which company brought it will, well, first of all, it can tell you a great deal about the quality of the piece you're dealing with. It can tell you about the time frame of the piece you were dealing with, and it does verify the Japanese origin of the piece. So that's why I keep the list. And as I say, the list is available to all of you. I am also always on the lookout for new names. So if you have um, your own Japanese import list, do let me know. All right, that's what we have going today. Uh, I have a wonderful little slideshow because Liz from, uh, from Brownhaven Studios has sent some more great spring pictures. So, new slides. And I will be going out. When you see this video, I will be shopping at the fancy schmancy antique store again because I haven't been back there in a while. And as you know, I, I don't have trouble filling my bag up from their store. And fancy schmancy antique store, we have a $10 cutoff, unless we find a super good deal, just to prove 
that you can go into a really high-end store and get some great bargains. So, tomorrow, fancy schmancy. See y'all later. <music>